Mexico, NAFTA has really had a huge impact. It transformed the economy in the last, uh, since it took place in 1994, radically. We used to export $40 billion uh, a year. Now we export $400 billion. We, of course, import uh, a similar amount. And I think the, the big issue here is that, you know, it has become a, a value chain region. So for us, it's very important. And our central scenario in Mexico is that, you know, the, the process of negotiations for NAFTA, they have a, a method and they're making progress. There have been five rounds of negotiations. There will be a new round in Montreal, a ministerial round in Montreal. And, uh, you know, the Ministry of Finance is not directly involved in the negotiations, but the Ministry of Economy is conducting this. He's, he's a, a, uh, he negotiated NAFTA the first time around. He was part of the negotiating team. So we hope that this will, this will turn out to be good for all three countries. When you hear comments uh, such as President Trump's remarks that he'll find a way for Mexico to pay for the wall tied back to NAFTA negotiations, does that worry you about where all of this goes? Well, you know, our Minister of Foreign Affairs was very clear uh, and, and he responded very clearly and very, uh, I think, forcefully. We're not going, you know, Mexico is not going to pay for, for the wall and it, it's not a negotiating position. It's a matter of I think his exact words of, of, uh, of national sovereignty and dignity. And we do often see the trade surplus used as a kind of a, a yardstick that the U.S. isn't getting a good deal out of its relationship with Mexico. What, how would you recharacterize that for President Trump? Well, I, mean, I, I don't want to recharacterize anything uh, for, for anyone, especially the President of the United States. But our view on trade is that trade is beneficial for both parties. You know, if, you know, when I was in school, uh, my trade teacher used to say that we tend to think we're mercantilists at heart. We tend to think, you know, exports are good, imports are bad. That's not the way trade works. When you export, the exporter gains something, but the importer gains something. When you import something, you also gain. What I think is very interesting about NAFTA is that it has evolved into a value chain uh, uh, agreement in which many of the manufactured goods go back and forth between the borders many times. You know, each time they go back and forth, there's a new value added. So at, at, throughout the whole manufacturing process, everybody wins. The one group that some would say hasn't won the way it was expected are, is the labor force in Mexico. We did not see wages grow the way we thought that they would. They've, in fact, stayed relatively flat over the course of the agreement. Well, I, you know, I would say there's different ways of looking at this. I think real wages in Mexico have increased. And there's a very interesting development of the last five years. Formal employment in Mexico has increased like it had never had in history. More than three million formal jobs have been created in the last five years. The... The closest that had ever happened was 2.6 million jobs. So it's a huge difference. And there doesn't appear, and I hope it doesn't happen, there doesn't appear to be a slowing down trend. You know, there's a serious and a large process of formalization in Mexico increasing. And when you have a formal job, you have social security, you have pensions, you have health care, you have access to daycare, etc. So that, that is a good thing. And the other way of looking at the, the wage level is when you, look, when you do an analysis of wage levels across the country, workers who work in export-related or trade-related uh, activities earn more than, than uh, the workers that are not. So, you know, we see this as a positive development. Of course, we would want wages to grow faster. Of course, we would want the, the economy to grow faster. But uh, we think it has been positive even in that front. Your economy has become tightly tied to that of the U.S. Uh, for all of these reasons, and to Canada's in a kind of a secondary way. Are you, are you now thinking about, as you look to a trade deal with the EU, as you look to the opportunities in China, is there a pivot away from the U.S. in your future? Well, no. I mean, our central scenario is uh, a, a positive negotiation, a positive outcome in NAFTA negotiations. Mexico has and had, even before all of this began, free trade agreements 
with most of the big economies in the world. We had a free trade agreement with the EU before. What is going on now is we're renegotiating to upgrade it. We have a free trade agreement with the, uh, many of the countries in the Asia-Pacific region, particularly in Latin America. So Mexico has a long tradition of having free trade agreements uh, all over the world. And, but like Canada, we share a large border with the United States. So most of our trade is with the United States. Slowly, in the last you know, few years, the concentration has fallen a bit, but we still, most of our trade is with the U.S. And, you know, it has, an, it has its advantages. You know, it is the largest economy in the world. It has a huge market. So, you know, we should also take advantage of it and of having that access. And they should take advantage of the comparative advantages and the comparative, competitive advantages that we have. We have um, had mixed messages on what may happen here from a one moment it looks as though the whole thing is about to fall apart to a more positive sounding negotiations continue. Are you scenario planning? I mean, as finance minister, do you need to think if there are massive tariffs or, or huge friction at the border, what you will do? Well, we, we're all, you know, as Ministry of Finance, we're always asked to always look at what may happen so that we're always prepared. And I think what's important is, you know, I, what we're doing now, but what Mexico in general has done over the last few years. And what we have been doing is uh, pursuing very sound, in my opinion, and conservative macroeconomic policies. Our debt to GDP ratios have been starting to fall. We're relatively, we have a relatively low level of debt, 46% uh, of GDP. Uh, our, we have a primary surplus uh, in our fiscal accounts. We have a prudent financial policy, uh, you know, banking and financial policies. We have done a set of structural reforms to, to make us more competitive. So all of these things, I think, make us more I think the, the word today is resilient to all of these volatilities, and that's what we will continue to work on. And what's your main agenda as finance minister in terms of promoting and encouraging growth? Well, well this is the last year of the administration for President uh, Peña Nieto. And when he gave me the honor of naming me, he said a uh, few instructions, very clear instructions of what I need to do. The nice thing about these instructions is that I can summarize them in a word, continuity. We have to continue with the sound uh, and conservative uh, macroeconomic policies that Mexico has done in the last year and in the last few years. And uh, my job is to make sure this continues to, to continue to steer the course so that the economy remains stable, growing, so that we can have a smooth transition. When, what's your expectation for, I'm not asking you to predict the outcome of the election, but for stability and growth on the other side of the election? Well, I mean, I think elections all over the world, uh, always, that's, there are an election, so by definition there is uncertainty. Uh, once the uncertainty is resolved, you know, things tend to come back to, uh, unquote, some kind of normal. Uh, so, in fact, what we're seeing today is relative stability you know to give you an idea last year at this time uh, at this time of year uh, there was so much uncertainty around the transition in the united states that the exchange rate in mexico was 22 pesos per dollar today is under 19 you know it's 1880 so it you know i don't want to say that that's a thermometer but it's an indicator that things that people are confident and are and, and that the outlook is relatively stable the investment prospects in mexico um, have looked good uh, and for a long time the population was also very attractive in terms of your demographics uh, the relative youth uh, the labor force how are mexicans feeling about uh, not just their own economy but particularly that fractious relationship with the u.s when so much of it now is about hot points like immigration um, how do they feel about it well i mean it's, it's hard for me to put words on, you know, the entire sentiment of, of the population, but, you know, we have had, a very, like, like Canada, a close relationship with the United States. And this relationship, it's a complex one, because uh, on some areas, you know, 
there is a lot of cooperation and in some areas there are certain differences and you know we're different countries so I would say that Canada and Mexico uh, when you speak about sentiments about the countries I suspect there, there may, may be similar ones you know in some things we, we really look are very close and we really look up to things that we could do and in other things there are differences and I think that's also fair and reasonable and as we work through these negotiations uh, Canada and Mexico have direct trade relationships, really important ones, especially, mm -hmm. of course, in auto manufacturing and parts. But we have to cross that big expanse between mm -hmm. us. Can we work directly? Is there other negotiations that can happen between our two countries without the U.S.? Well, I think, you know, our, and we, were, we have been speaking about this. For us, it's important to keep, uh, I think, the benefits of a North American region are tremendous. And they have proved to be tremendous. It's not, I'm not speculating. I'm not saying that it could happen. They have proved to be tremendous. So for Mexico, it's very important to keep it a, trilater a trilateral, uh, uh, a trilateral talks and dialogues, so that we can continue to work uh, together. And we're in close contact with in, with Canada. We came here to speak with the minister to see how we can continue to promote. Uh, trade and investment in you know in Mexico and and vice versa. So I think you know Mexico is is committed to keeping this a trilateral a trilateral region.